Here's your fitness tip today. TV is making you fat. Mm. What do you is think that about that? New news? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, the way you said it was kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, no, here's, here's, no, seriously though, this has been, um, uh, and it wasn't it didn't happen until later. Uh, one of the the single best pieces of advice that I gave uh, clients that were trying to lose weight. Uh, without putting them on diet restrictions, right? Without yeah. saying, hey, you have to do this or cut these calories. Just simply saying, listen, here's here's one one rule I want you to live by for the next month and just see what happens is don't eat in front of the television or your phone. Uh, like just, just non-distracted eating. Yeah. It, and it blew my mind how many people became so much more aware. It's very similar to the advice that before social media became so popular so that the advice we used to give where I'd tell someone just to track, like just becoming aware yeah. it automatically makes you start to make better decisions because many times we're so unaware of what we're even doing. And I think today's time we're distracted more than we've ever been. Mm -hmm. So instead of giving a client these crazy restrictions and saying, you can't do this, can't do that, or follow this meal plan, just saying, Hey, let's first do this. Let's cut out some of these bad habits that, that don't, allow you to be aware of your body's natural yeah. signals that are trying to tell you. You've Isn't it enough. hilarious that you have to actually visually watch the food go in to your mouth and mm. that'll make a massive impact? Yeah. <laughs> I like to watch it when you eat it. I know. Uh, I, you know what really, when they do studies on this, they, they find people reduce their calories by 10 to 15% just by not being distracted. Yeah. Just because they're, and what it is, yeah, it's definitely awareness, but really what's the way it's, they explain it is you get signals from, you know, hormones that your body releases like ghrelin and, you know, as your stomach stretches, you get, your brain will get signals. But if you're focused on something else, it doesn't register as quickly yeah. and you end up eating, and someone might think, oh, 10% more calories. What is that? Well, if you eat 400 calories, it's 40 more calories. And you add it up throughout the day. Yeah, and if you it's, always it's two three hundred calories a day. And if you always eat in front of the TV, which mm -hmm. a lot of people or today, on front of your phone. And I'm guilty. I'm by the way, I'm guilty of this. Or I think even uh, driving their car. A lot of advice like this, I think, uh, what ends up happening is you know I see it in my own behaviors, and I think, okay, I'm a fitness professional. I'm aware of these things. Yep. Uh, this I slip up on this, so my clients <laughs> have got to. Because they, they're not thinking about fitness like I'm thinking about it 24 seven, and if this gets me caught up, you got to think the average person who's not thinking about fitness all day—it's not their career. Uh, this probably happens a lot. Yeah, you, you want to know what's funny? Is uh, uh, now I'm thinking back. Right, my oldest son was—he wasn't the best eater when he was a kid, and um, you know, in, in my culture, like that's uh, that's a bad, that's bad, that's not good, right? So you got to make sure he eats more, right? And when they would, when my son would get fed by his grand, both either one of his grandmas, what they would do to get him to eat more is they would distract him with television, mm -hmm. and then he'd watch the TV, and then the spoon would go in front of his mouth, and he'd, uh, he'd just open it and eat the food. So it was like, and I, I mean, looking back now, it's clear what was happening is we were they were he was being distracted so we could feed him. It's or make sure he funny food. that you just said that because. What made like I told the guys today, like, oh, I have the fitness tip. What made me think about this and why this was on my mind was exactly that. I'm guilty of this. So I'm guilty of using the iPad to kind of distract Max to get him to like just sit still and eat. And it's and I've used that as a tool so many times that so last night Katrina and I were like oh the house we we we've, we've got a lot everything done we're kind of relaxing well we're all gonna have dinner together and you know instead of because uh, what happens right now is we normally feed Max and then Katrina and I have our dinner afterwards mm -hmm. um, by ourselves and instead we're like oh let's have dinner as a family today and obviously for having dinner as a family there's no reason to have iPad on the table or anything like that. And so it, it disrupted that normal pattern that we do with mm. him and he wasn't having it. Mm. And I was like, oh fuck, look what I did. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Look at, look at, I just did is I've, al I've allowed us to make that a, 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 a kind of a ritual for when he's eating. So he could sit down there and watch his cartoons and eat his food. And it, anybody that's done that with their kid, they know that it's like nice because it gets them to settle down and sit still and they're not. Well, so nice. food, food manufacturers, I don't know whether they did this on purpose or you know, maybe on accident. I don't know, but they started to because remember, TV didn't exist up until well, widespread up until probably what the sixties and seventies. Doug, how, how when do you think TV started becoming kind of 
commonplace in American homes. Would you say it's probably the 70s and 60s? When did you stop listening to the radio probably, for your right? entertainment? <laughs> you got to remember, I grew up with no TV. Oh, that's right. So I'm the wrong person to ask. Yeah. But I mean, I think the TV first came out in the 50s, right? It did, but yeah. it really didn't become commonplace I, in like 70s. Like, uh, yeah, when was it? When was it? Because like now the average home has like 2.3 or something. There's, like, yeah. there's more televisions than children in homes, right? That's the yeah. average. Maybe you could look that up. I'm going to look this up because I don't know the answer. Yeah, but I, so what happened was TV became, it was this new thing, right? It's like, oh my gosh. You got movies in your in your house, and then there's all this broadcasting. What's going on? And they started to design and create foods. Yeah. TV dinners. TV dinners became a thing. You remember yeah. that, right? Yeah. They don't really make Hungry those. Hungry man and all that kind of stuff. They don't yeah. really, Go ahead, Doug. And the TV trays. Yeah, so it was only around 9% of Americans owned TVs in the 1950s, but by 1960, that figured, figure had jumped to over 80%. There you go. And so, and then you started. To you said by the eighties. That what you said? No, no, nineteen sixties. Sixties. Yeah, nineteen sixties. Okay, yeah. Wow. very fast. An and then today would be a neat stat to look up is what the average. How many TVs are in the average American home now? Like, there's now it's not. It went from very rare for someone to have mm -hmm. it to most eighty percent of Americans have it to now most people have multiple TVs. Remember in the their house. okay? Do you remember that famous uh, part of Back to the Future? Yeah. When he goes back in time and he's in the 50s or late 50s and he goes, oh, yeah, we have two TVs in the house. And they're like, get out of here. Nobody's got two TVs. No one's that rich. No one's that rich, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Just the average is 2.5 TVs per household. Yes. Wow. Isn't that wild? Yeah. And 31% yeah. and have four or more. Yeah, so there's foods now that are created around that culture or have been for a long time. So snack foods were big. So think about this. Imagine if... This was before TVs were invented, right? And so all meals were pretty much around a table with people. How many snack foods would be consumed if that was the case? Right. You'd get up and leave. You'd be like, I don't want to sit here and eat a bag of chips. I'm, I'm done eating. Let me get out of here. Yeah. But if I'm watching this TV show, it's nice to snack well, on something or whatever. Was uh, the microwave, did that come out like simultaneously with the television? Or was that like- 70s. The TV dinner. A little bit later? Because I know that that had a major impact as well in terms of- you know, just being able to heat something up re relatively quickly what was the, and watch TV. Yeah, I mean, obviously we don't remember from experience, but have you guys seen ad? Like, what? I wonder what the ads look like, Doug, for uh, a microwave. Yeah, microwave. I wonder how they how they pitched yeah, it. Nuclear technology or something. I, like I bet they. I bet they. I bet they pitched it like you know supporting the the mom. You know, of like, course. Yeah, supporting oh, the yeah. mom in the house so she doesn't have to spend slave Absolutely. hours and hours in the kitchen or whatever. So I looked this up a long time ago. The there were whole cookbooks. Uh, when the microwave came out around cook Dude. about microwaves, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, uh. so it was like this whole like cook a whole meal with the microwave, and they taught you how to cook a steak in a microwave, and obviously it's gross. Oh you don't want to do God. that. Dude, it, I've it had that before. You know that you had a microwave. So I, my grandmother, okay, remember when I moved to the Bay Area? Wait, okay? you mean like a raw steak? Yes, yeah, okay. To potatoes, every my grandma only did the microwave. So yeah, well, and TV like dinners. She had the little fold out. Parents. So she's that generation, right? That actually watched the evolution of yeah. TV wow. and set in the microwave. So. When I moved in with her, she was, by the way, she lived by herself for many, many years. Like she, at a very uh, young age, she was divorced. And then basically, and she was a two job, swing shift, crazy work, save mm -hmm. all her money, didn't spend anything on herself. Lived in this little condo, two bedroom apartment in San Jose. Uh, I moved over here to, to when I originally thought I was going to finish my degree in Canise. Moved in with her basically just to like focus and buckle down on school. And this is how I fell into training. Well, she, I mean, I ate with her and so, and I didn't know this until I moved in with her and everything was microwaved and like my, my grandmother made me like Salisbury steak and fucking the microwave. Oh, like, wow, yeah. oh dude, it was so bad, bro. Oh, so bad. I've had eggs, uh, you know, cooked in there and just she, like, oh my God. She would like do canned raw. vegetables that had been in there for like months, pour it in a, in a bowl, put it in the microwave. That was dinner. Oh was, yeah. my God. Yeah, yeah bro. It was That's bad. Crazy it was so talk. bad. So you know it's funny. You can look at you can find it's still like that. It might you be can nice. find. <laughs> oh, is it really, bro? Oh my god, dude! It's pretty bad. Oh, it's pretty bad. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.